I would like to invite a hacker who is also a blogger and also a hack influencer. Everybody, put your hands together for none other than Stoke. So, 
My key to success was investing time in myself. Instead of just sitting by my computer or you know, wasting time on, on watching Netflix, I was really into say, Twitter. I was, uh, I was running Burp. Any kind of website that I visited, I turned, off, I turned off all the active scanning parts of Burp and I just had it running next to it. So I got used to seeing the things that came through, how the server responses work, what kind of infrastructure is this. Maybe they're, they're using kind of, some kind of version that I didn't know about. And that built into something that is defined as experience. If I see an application today and it says, you need to practice. So, the major question is, why would you even start in this goddamn industry when automation and AI is going to take it all over? Right? Because that's what people are telling you. Don't hunt for bugs. AI is going to destroy your future. But that's where the human mind comes in play. Because we can look for patterns. We can look for anomalies. The different things that a computerized person wouldn't know. Like France has this great talk today. Like API fussing, right? If you look at a couple, uh, a couple of uh, content and you use your brain, if it says method blah and the other says uh, method nothing, try system blah. Maybe it works. It's a combination of finding things. So my takeaway for you is to invest time in yourself. Invest time in finding friends that do the same thing. Because in the end, if you're getting good at this stuff, you will be better at hacking. And also remember, we are all humans after all. We're not machines, right? So if you're submitting a report, try to make that report as good as possible. Because what that's going to happen is that you're going to start to create a relationship with a program. Because there's a human running the programs, and they want to find value. There's a big difference in, in spending a lot of time on doing recon and finding this weird quirky subdomain with a vintage installation of CMS that has admin admin active on a semi-weird dev domain. You're going to write this great, great report and say, I can RC the shit out of this, it's really bad, blah, blah, blah. And the response is going to be, oh crap, do we still run that? The remediation is going to be, we shut it down. Thank you very much. <laughs> I got another thing for you. So, so if, if we're able to do that and we send that report in, the most important thing is to look at it that way. What is the most value for the program? What do they want? Do they want to know about their old dev instead of broken? Or do they want to know about the PII leakage in the new web app that they created with a mobile interface that's really cool that everybody uses every day? Big value. So if you submit reports with good value for the customer, that they understand that you are a dedicated searcher for the system, it's going to start something called human interaction. It might just be social engineering here, and that's always out of scope. But, but if you can inspire the triages and researchers that you are keen to wanting to protect that company, things are going to happen. Quality reports leads to quality insights. Maybe you'll get invited to a challenge. Challenges, that's good money. And that means you created a connection to the company. Maybe a little bit of loyalty. And in the end, isn't that what we all want? Friends, helping friends. Thank you. <laughs>